Hey guys, it's Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got a cute little treat box for you. It's a lidded box and it is perfect for these Valentine Hostess Ding Dongs. They're exchange packs, but like for school Valentine's, you can put the two in from on there. I found them at uh, my local grocery store on the end cap. It was a cardboard display just past the end cap. I've seen them at uh, Meyer also. So check your grocery or your discount stores. They look like this. It's kind of a big package with the exchange pack logo. They're heart shaped, individually wrapped, and you get eight in a box. And this is a cute way to repackage and make something kind of special. This is a two part lidded box. And to make this box, you'll need two squares. I am using early espresso and real red cardstock. And these squares are five and three quarters square for the bottom of the box and four and 13 sixteenths for the lid. Let's get the Simply Scored tool and we're gonna score these. We'll start with the lid. We're gonna just pop that into our Simply Score tool and score all four sides at three quarters of an inch. And now the bottom of our box, I'm going to pop that one in and score all four sides at one and a quarter inch. Got my tear and tape, bone folder, and paper snips. Let's go ahead and work the score lines on these box and lid. I'm going to do all of the score lines. Burnish with a bone folder, get a nice sharp crease. All right, there we go. Both of the lid and the box have been burnished. Now we're going to trim. And I like to cut a nice straight line. And then on the glue tab, cut out a little dart. Then I'll take the glue tab and I'll just taper it a little bit. All right, so we're gonna do that on the other fold, the other score line on this side, and then taper. And then the opposite side, 180 degrees. We're going to do that to both the lid and the base of the box. All right, we're on our last glue tab here. And I'm going to cut that little tapered edge. That helps us get a clean edge when we glue our box together. If it's tapered just a little bit, you won't have that situation where with a square corner you can see the glue tab. So that's what that little taper is all about. All right, let's go ahead and add tear and tape adhesive on all of our glue tabs. So there's eight glue tabs, four on each box, and I like to do a little equal sign so that the adhesive is close across the top of the tab and then close across the bottom of the tab. I'm gonna do that for all eight tabs. All right, all of our tabs have tear and tape. I'm gonna remove the adhesive liner from all the tabs. And we'll form our lid and our base the same way. We're gonna fold in, bring up a nice 90 degree corner, fold in, Bring up a nice 90 degree corner all the way around the box. We'll form the lid the same way. All right, here we are with the lid. We'll tuck in each of those tabs and glue. Now I've got a box and a lid. We can put our treat in there because we're going to decorate the lid of our box for the most part. So it's safe at this point. I also have these little Hostess baby bunts. They're also the um, exchange packs, and they fit in this little box, too. So another fun little treat you can take a look out for, these Hostess baby bunts. All right, there's our lidded box. Now it's time to decorate. I have got a 3 and one eighth inch piece square of the sweet talk designer series paper this is brand new oh that's kind of cute too maybe we should do the opposite side this time let's do that this is brand new from stampin up in the january june catalog it's still available for valentine's you can shop 
by going to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net and click shop. You won't regret this paper. It's really a fun Valentine pack. I'll show you another box at the end here with a different piece of this designer shears paper, a beautiful multicolor candy paper. All right, then I have a circle. This is real red, it's scallop circle. I use the layering circles dies to cut. And it is the second to the largest, so two and 13 sixteenths. And that's the layering circles die set. I'm gonna pop that right on the center. Oh, it's cute. I like this little sprinkle pattern in the background. And then I have a two and a quarter inch circle. I punched this one using the really tired Stampin' Up! punch. I'm going to stamp my little otter in early espresso. Now this otter is from the Awesome Otters stamp set. I think it's just so cute. We're going to use your otterly awesome and our little otter here. And when we saw her hands spread out like this. We were wishing for a I love you this much stamp. Maybe you have one in your collection, but we decided since we didn't, we would have her holding a little heart garland for Valentine's Day. So let's go ahead and ink up and stamp our otter on the two and a quarter inch basic white circle. I'm gonna color with the aqua painter and some ink pads. So I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry just a little bit so we get a nice crisp, clean image. While that's drying, I want to bring in my heart punch pack. I don't know if you've seen this one. It's been around for a little bit from Stampin' Up! It's still in the annual catalog. It's a two punch pack. It has a coordinating smooth heart. We're going to punch using real red cardstock and a scallop heart punch. And we're going to punch that one using basic white. For a little bit of fun, we're going to emboss the real red smooth heart using the dot embossing folder from Checks and Dots. And that's going to give it just a little bit of a visual flair. I love to punch or die cut pieces to add as embellishments or layers and then add just a little texture to them using an embossing folder or sometimes it's fun to do a tone on tone stamping where you might use raw red ink and stamp a pattern over the punched out image. It just gives a nice little visual um, visual appeal. So there's our little dotty heart. Pretty cute, right? Let's glue it to the scallops. Got liquid glue two together. And I think our little otter has had a rest. The ink has had a little time to dry, so let's get our ink pads and aqua painter. Okay, here I have soft suede, pale papaya, and basic gray. And all I've done is squeeze the ink pad so that the pad touches the top of the case. And deposit some ink. Now we're going to color with an aqua painter and I'm going to start with my pal papaya and get it really nice and loose with the water because we want a very pale little otter belly here not too orange. Since we stamped in stampin up classic ink we're going to Go in and fill the otter belly, but not touch the early espresso lines. You want to just kind of keep your distance from the early espresso because it's a water-based ink. So it will, with too much water, it will um, smear the, the line. And I'm just going to clean the pale papaya off. I like to use my scraps. Just swipe the brush until it runs clean. Now we're gonna do some soft suede. We like to kind of work along the back of the animal. And then as I work towards the center, the, the brush deposits the paint and kind of cleans itself off and you'll get some shadow and highlights just real naturally. Now we're doing soft suede but our outline is early espresso. So the brown and brown, you don't have to be quite as careful 
not to pick up the line or the, the color of the line in your painting. Don't forget the back arm here and the back leg. I like to go in with a little bit more color and just kind of dab since otters are furry creatures and it'll give you, it'll dry with a little bit of um, modeling, almost like fur. And then now the basic gray, we're gonna go in on the otter's nose and I'm gonna clean off about halfway so we can get a really light gray where the artist didn't draw the hash lines and a darker gray over the artist's hash lines. So that's it, our simple little watercolor otter. And we're gonna leave her a minute to dry. I'm gonna put her aside and we're gonna get the stamp and cut and emboss machine and dies from the Sweet Hearts dies. So this is our Sweet Hearts dies. We're gonna use this little border piece here. And we're gonna cut some hearts that we can use on the little garland. Got it all set up for die cutting and I'm gonna just pop in a little bit of polished pink cardstock. And then I've got the scraps from punching the heart. I'm gonna lay this little die right over both and give it a crank. I did back and forth since I'm cutting through two layers. That machine out of the way. We can just pop these guys right out. And now we've got more than enough little pink and red hearts for our garland. And just separate the two out, and you get eight little hearts in a pass, more than what we need. Aren't they so sweet? They make the perfect little embellishment. All right, let's slide them aside for just a minute. And we're going to bring our little otter back in here got two more die cut pieces for layers on our box here. I like to set the stage for our focal image with some cool layered shapes. And the Hippo and Friends die set is perfect for doing those layering shapes. I've got the medium size swoopy square. This is polished pink. And then I call this one the, the rectangle oval because it looks like an oval was laid on top of a rectangle. It's um, the middle, the medium size one there too. Early espresso, polished pink. Let's go ahead and glue them to our box top. I'm gonna use multi-purpose liquid glue and don't bring the glue quite to the edge of this label. It's just a bit wider than our box. That's okay. Sometimes you gotta think outside the box, right? So see the little loopy ends go a little bit past the ends of our box, but that's not a big deal. Now, We've got our polished pink swoopy square. Center that one right inside. Then we can get our heart. We're gonna pop that one way up. It can go past the edges of the box just a little bit too. That's okay. Cute, right? Our little sweet otter. Let's put her on with some Stampin' Dimensionals. Because of the watercolor, the paper just curled a tiny bit. It's basic white cardstock and it just got wet. So I'm gonna use four Stampin' Dimensionals. I might not use that many, but because it was watercolored, I want it to lay flat. We're gonna use a little more Dimensionals. I always use kind of a lot of adhesive anyway, but I'm gonna pop her on right on the center. So cute. Now it's time for the details. We're gonna make a little, build a little garland and do our ransom note greeting. For the ransom note greeting, you'll need a scrap of basic white cardstock. And I'm quite literally using a scrap. This is a great way to use up those little bits that are hanging around. I'm going to get some ink pads. I've got my, you're utterly awesome greeting. We're gonna stamp it in two colors. I've got early espresso and real red. I like that we get to highlight the punny word, the otterly awesome in real red ink. And to do that, we're gonna have to stamp your otterly awesome in real red. 
and let's see I want a cleaner otterly now we're gonna clean that stamp using our simply shammy and switch to early espresso I'm gonna ink my stamp you are utterly awesome again that one looks pretty good try my emma's a little light and awesome let's see let me try one more hmm, i think the first one's still the best all right so now we have to let's see which one do i want to do from the red i think i like this one all right so we're gonna cut utterly right out kind of ransom note style you can cut letters words or phrases and so we're gonna cut utterly out of the real red and then you are and awesome out of the early espresso you want to cut close and kind of straight you're gonna build the greeting you can build different greetings out of different fonts. You can cut out different letters, different words from different stamp sets. You can really have some fun with this ransom note style of greeting. I love that it also allows you to determine how much visual weight it gets on the project. Let me take the ink pads away before we ruin anything. And we're gonna adhere our greeting. Now our otter is up on dimensionals, so we're going to have to do our greeting with a combination of mini stamp and dimensionals and multi-purpose liquid glue. So I'm going to cut a few little strips and halves here. I'm going to start with the UR. I'm going to put a little dimensional on one end and a little liquid glue on the other. And here's our sample, so you can add two. You are, and then utterly awesome. We're gonna do the same way. We'll put a little dimensional on one end and a little liquid glue on the other. All right, our last little piece of greeting goes on there. So cute, you are utterly awesome. Love it. Now for our little embellishment, I've got some baker's twine here this is the essentials pack and we're going to use some white baker's twine and i'm going to start by tying the tiniest little bow that i can it might not be super tiny that's okay though because you can hold the knot and pull the tails and adjust the size of the loops and then once you got some itty bitty little loops then you Cut away from the spool some itty bitty little tails to match. And so there's the end of our cute little heart garland. Now we're gonna need mini glue dots. I'm gonna take a mini glue dot here and I'm gonna use my take your pick tool and roll it up. And I'm going to pop it over our otter's right hand. And we're going to do the same thing over otter's left hand. Roll it up. Use your take your pick tool and just roll it into a little skinny log. And then we'll pop that one in otter's left hand another little bow on the edge take a little scrap of twine right in that glue dot make a little loop right in that glue dot and then you can cut away the excess <laughs> oh, just funny I love it now let me slide away Let's get our hearts. I've got half dimensionals here, which is perfect. Put it kind of low on the hearts. This time I've got two red and 
one pink. It's okay, we're just gonna alternate. But I'm gonna start with the one that's in the center. I'm gonna put it right up over the garland. If you need to tighten it up a little bit, you can. Okay, right over. Trim off the excess there. And then we'll repeat with the two red hearts right on the little twine there. Haha, <laughs> so cute. I can't get over it. I love the otterly awesome punny greeting, the cute little garland and the detail of the tiny little twine bow. All right, you guys, that's it. If you've got any questions, you can email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. And to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net and click shop. And here is another little version of the same box, like I promised. This is the one we made on Coffee and a Mystery Card today. So if you're not familiar with our Coffee and a Mystery Card, uh, sometimes we do Coffee and a Mystery, not a card, as you can see, where we play along with a series of clues to build either a fun fold card or a treat. And this was the one that I played along today. I will include a picture of this one on the blog and notes, but they are almost identical in the measurements and the products and the sizes and everything. Some simple substitutions. I used Stampin' Blends to color my robot. The Nuts and Bolts stamp set. You'll see that my label is Smoky Slate and so is the box for this version. And instead of the garland with the twine, I just wrapped the lid of the box with some polished pink ribbon and tied it up. So there's another version of the same treat box. Awesome for these little hostess exchange packs. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Come join us on the craft social. The link is under the video. Bye, guys. See you next time.